All right, everyone, today we are talking about biking. And no, I do not mean that sweet hog going down the road. I mean that thin frame little thing flying down a mountain at breakneck speeds. Today's mini game review is Lonely Mountain Downhill. Hey, what's up, everyone? Game Dad here. And as I said just a couple seconds ago, we are back with another mini game review. And we are taking a look at Lonely Mountain Downhill on the Nintendo Switch. This is an awesome little title that I've seen tons of other people talk about, and now I wanted to give my two cents about it as well, because I have been having an absolute blast playing this game. But first, here's the obligatory YouTube content creator message. If you are new to the channel, please be sure to go down there, hit the like button, the subscribe thing, like a notification bell, you know, all that stuff that's down there. Go check those out, and let's go ahead and dive into that review. All right, so first up, as per the use for these mini game reviews, we are talking about the visuals for this game. And I gotta say, they are bright, they are colorful, and they don't have a lot of detail to them. But that's okay, because it still looks really good. The environments are really awesome. There are branching paths that go everywhere and lead you to exploring new nature-y, wilderness-y areas. And it is a ton of fun to do so and see all of the fun and creative ways that you can fly down into a rock. Did I say into a rock? I mean all the beautiful scenery and trees that you can crash into. But not just those. I also mean all of those awesome jumps that you can hit that are all over these mountains. And it's so great because you can just slam into the side of a wall. And what's great is you can even get like customizable things to just look fantastic as you go tumbling down a hill and totally eat crap into the ground. Now before we move into the gameplay, which I think I've thoroughly alluded to, let's go ahead and talk about the sound. Um, there really isn't much. There's not really any kind of background music or anything like that, but there is a lot of like ouchy sounds when you crash and there's some nature-y sounds like you know wind and birds there's oh there's the sound of your tires like against the ground and then the rocks and the trees and the walls and the crashing there's all those bike sounds yeah and then once you've seen how pretty everything is and once you've seen the amazing sound effects that this game has you get into the meat and potatoes of this game which is finding new and creative ways to totally eat crap into the dirt. Now, it may sound like I'm completely dumping on this game, but I'm definitely not. This game is super fun. It's actually like really addicting. It's one of those kind of games where you think that you're getting better at it and then you become overconfident and then you realize, oh no, you haven't gotten better. All you did was just take a little bit longer to die again. The game has you on a constant loop of trial and error until you find just the right amount of breakneck speed meets just use your brakes. And then eventually you realize, oh, there's an end to the level. And then once you reach the end, you realize there was specific times that you should have met to, you know, kind of get better at the level. And personally, I don't know how to do it. I can go slow enough that I can make turns and not crash constantly. Or I can go fast enough that I just kind of go like, wee down the hill, and it's fun to watch, and then I get sent back up to the top again, and then I have to try again. Now again, everything I'm saying, in, as it's coming out of my mouth, and it's in my brain, it's like I'm dumping on the game. But again, I'm not. The game is really fun. It's very addicting, and that trial and error, it, it has that, okay, just one more time, I think I can get it. It has that kind of vibe to it. And I really like it. It's really, really fun. Now, I know I didn't talk much about the visuals, but that's because there isn't really, you know, a ton of stuff to the visuals. You have some really basic, you know, designs and stuff like that. It's not like there's spatial features or anything on your character. The bikes don't look super detailed. They just kind of like do some palette swaps to give you some different colors. You know, trees are a couple different shades of green. Uh, dirt is, you know, brown, like dirt. Rocks are gray as as they do and then like yeah you can get some new bike frames and some new gear and stuff like that 
And that's pretty much it for those visuals. And the sound, like I said, you know, there isn't really any kind of background music per se. Nothing that really stands out. Every once in a while you'll hear like little tunes chime in, but it's mainly just sound effects. And honestly, it's kind of, it's peaceful. You are just up on this mountain alone, which by the way, in real life, that's kind of dumb. If you're going on a mountain, take someone with you, you know, buddy system. But it's, it's nice in a game. You're just chilling, finding the best path down, and finding really cool shortcuts and stuff like that. The game, it doesn't have like any kind of gnarly physics to it, but the game will punish you if you do stupid things. If you go really, really fast down a mountain and then try to take a hairpin turn, well, the game will let you know that that wasn't a smart choice, and next time you should make a better one, like, you know, going a little slower to hit a hairpin turn. Because I can tell you from experience, in real life, if you do that, it will end badly. And you'll realize that you made a bad choice. So the video game is just training for real life, honestly. But overall, the gameplay, it's very simple, really. You can go faster, you can go slower, and you can turn. You have to go from point A, the top of the mountain, to point B, the bottom of the mountain. And how you get there is up to you. How risky you want to be is up to you. And that's, that's kind of a lie. It's not really up to you because if you're risky, you'll die. But it's still a ton of fun trying to figure out the quickest way down with the least amount of death possible. And as is with these mini reviews, we come to the aesthetics section. Normally this is the catch-all where anything I forgot to say before I added in. And honestly, I don't really think I forgot to say anything. Uh, let's see, die a lot, uh-huh. Game is fun, okay, check. Uh, the visuals are pretty, yeah, I, I mean, I like them. Uh, sounds, yep, it's got them. Uh, and just overall gameplay, fun. Yeah, I think I said that already though. But still, the game is fun. You should definitely play the game. Yeah. Yeah, I think that about covers it. I mean, it's fun, it's pretty, it has sounds. And yeah, that's pretty much what Lonely Mountain Downhill is on the Switch. I mean, it's a really cool game. And it's just, it, it's refreshing to have something that isn't relying on the latest and greatest physics and graphics and everything to make a really fun game. It's, it gives you something simple with a very simple concept. Go from top of mountain to bottom of mountain. End. And that's awesome. It's nice to have a game that's simple to play, that's fun to play, and keeps me going back for more. I will say that there are times when I definitely like rage quit and I am done with the game for a few days, but I always end up going back to it because it's a ton of fun. And like you can get it, I believe, in the eShop. And then I have a physical copy from uh, Super Rare Games on the wall here somewhere. I don't know exactly at this moment, but the game is awesome. And I would highly recommend that you pick it up because you will absolutely have a ton of fun with this game. And now for some more of that, you know, obligatory, hey, I'm making a YouTube video stuff. If you like today's video, please let me know down in the comments below. Have you ever played Lonely Mountain Downhill? Do you own a Nintendo Switch? And if not, when are you getting it? Oh, and while you're down there, please be sure to also hit those like and subscribe buttons and that little notification bell so that you get an alert every time I've got a new video coming out. Also, if you like what I do here, you know, maybe consider checking out patreon.com slash game dad show or hit me up on social media, like all the social medias. Well, all the ones that count at game dad show. Now, as always, I'm game dad. I thank you all for watching and I'll catch you later.